You have ThemePress installed and you're ready to amplify your company culture, engage employees, and increase high-quality collaboration. But where to start? For the visual design team at Bricket, that work starts with a theme. A theme determines the visual display of page elements, such as type and color choice. Font selection, color palettes, heading choices, and link styles are all examples of the many design decisions that comprise a theme. Helping your users feel at home when browsing Confluence is a huge challenge that tailoring these elements can help you overcome. This video is designed to help you get started. We'll cover creating a new theme, adding your company's logo, and changing some basic theme components such as font and color palette. Along the way, we'll discuss key concepts to shape your thinking when designing your site for the very first time. We should take this time to mention that you will need Confluence admin rights. Themes are hierarchical in ThemePress. There is a global default site theme, which influences the look and feel of the entire site, as well as the option to apply themes to spaces, helping users to identify and delineate the different sections of a site. As the site matures, the default site theme serves as a catch-all for new spaces and a visual backbone as additional themes are conceived. Since we're approaching this video from the perspective of a first-time designer, we'll aim to create a theme that can be used globally by keeping our design choices fairly conservative. To get started, let's open the theme press designer by pressing the period key. In the first section of the theme tab, you can see the current theme. ThemePress comes pre-populated with several themes as starting points. Developing a new theme for your site requires making a copy of an existing theme and then modifying it to your specifications. To make the copy, click Manage Themes, select the magnifying glass icon, find the theme you want to copy, hit the Copy Theme button, Name your new theme, and click OK. There you have it, the start of your very own theme. Next, let's apply our new theme to a space so we can watch our changes come to life in a controlled environment. Click the Space tab in the Designer, click the Use Space Theme button, and then select our newly created theme to apply it to the space. Next, let's add a logo to our new theme. To do this, we'll need to head back to the Theme tab and turn on the Theme Designer. Doing so reveals the high-level components of our new theme. As you can see, there's a ton to explore. Let's select the logo we want to use. If you haven't uploaded your logo, please pause your video and do that now. Click the logo you want to use, refresh the page, and you can see that the logo applied to your theme. Depending on your needs, you have the option to adjust the placement and the size of your logo. Clicking away from the window where you made your edits applies those changes after a refresh. I'll show you an example of changing the height by adjusting the pixel values of my logo. Every space which uses this theme will now display your selected logo at the top. Now that we have our logo looking the way we want it, the next area of the theme we might consider is the fonts we want to use when designing pages, spaces, and the content itself. Font is a huge part of creating a site that feels unique. Depending on your situation, you may want users to see and experience either a wide or narrow range of options. Those options, like other areas of a theme, are controlled in the designer. When clicking fonts, you can see I have two dropdowns. The first specifies the font options I'd like to offer my users, and the second dropdown unlocks the ability to specify font families outside of standard Confluence, also known as web fonts. Web fonts are a CSS feature that allows you to specify font files to be downloaded, along with Confluence as it's accessed. Many companies use web fonts heavily in their branding, so incorporating them into your theme 
is time well spent and important to know how to do. The first step is to point ThemePress towards a web font you'd like to include. In this example, we'll use Google Fonts, but Fonts.com, Typekit, or Typography.com are all supported web font services. There are tons of font options available, and if you know your font ahead of time, just search for it. But for this example, I'm going to use Lato. Clicking deeper reveals more options. I'll take a regular font, an italic option, and then two more groups with heavier weights. You can see my selections are added to the styles list. Next, let's link these fonts into ThemePress by clicking Embed, Import, and copying this string of code. Heading back to the ThemePress designer, we paste it into the Google Import URL window. By doing this, we've told ThemePress where to reference the information around this external font called Lato. The final step is making that font available for users to select and design with. This is done by defining a font family in the same section of the designer. Click to expand the Choices dropdown. This is where we'll add our new font family. You can see the theme we copied already has one font family defined. We'll add a second using the following format. Font family 2, colon, space, Lotto. We could stop here, but a best practice is to specify a few backup fonts in case of problems with connectivity or an unsupported browser, however uncommon. I'll copy from another font family and add Arial, Helvetica, and Sans Serif. There are a few rules for adding fonts, such as font names with one word do not need quotes, so it's best to consult our documentation on defining font families for a complete overview. The choices we make when choosing fonts are revealed in both the designer and in Confluence. For example, if I go to the text and heading sections of the designer, you can see my options for controlling the pre-formatting of things like body text and headings. The design choices made in this section are the options available to our users when they create content in the Confluence Content Editor. Now that we've defined the font options we'd like our theme to display, the last thing we'll explore in this video is the ability to define our theme's color palette. While a user can choose any color when creating content, this palette acts as an approved list of recommendations to keep spaces and pages visually on brand. The palette is broken into core colors, tints and shades, and grays. The power of a theme's palette is that a top-level color change is spread to any area of the site that references the palette. For example, the color of my links and their color upon hover reference the primary color and the secondary color of the theme, two shades of blue. Changing these elements to a shade of red and pink automatically applies those changes to the rest of the designer and the areas of the site it influences, such as the color of the links. Relying on the theme when designing your space makes large scale changes in the future really easy to implement and provide suggestions to help keep your users on brand.